Hey, Gary Hoover here. My dear, beloved Fortune magazine, I love the Fortune 500 list, all that, just got the new issue that has the best places to work in America. Of course, nobody really knows where the best places to work are. It's too complex, so many subtleties. And what might be a good place to work for you might not be a good place to work for me. But Fortune works very hard at talking to lots of people and gathering lots of information. They've been doing this several years now to try to figure out, well, what looks like for the average person, this would be a great place to work. I find this list absolutely fascinating every issue. Number one place to work is Google. I haven't read all the details, but you know they have a beautiful campus. A lot of their people get a one day a week to work on their own projects. Company has more money than God, you know. Um, it better be a good place to work. It should. Although I don't think Apple is in the list at all. I think it's a more challenging environment. Don't hold me to it, but it's certainly in here in the top 20. That's interesting. Number two, Boston Consulting Group. Uh, you know, the average employee makes 139000 a year. It ought to be a good place to work. Um, it's not, not so hard. You only got 2,000 employees, you know. Uh, SAS Institute is third in North Carolina. I've met those folks, uh, that company, 6,000 people. Um, wonderful. Cary, North Carolina, they're in the Research Triangle. Wonderful software company. But here's what's interesting to me. The fourth best place to work. And the first one, well, Google has 18,000 employees. They're getting pretty big. The next one is Wegmans Food Markets, Rochester, New York, 41,000 employees. Here is a low-margin, family-owned supermarket that has to compete every day with Walmart, and yet it's the fourth best place to work in America. What does that tell you? What does that tell you about what's important to the people that own and run that company? What does that tell you about the other people that work there and the values they have to have? That's uh, most... So I say most people couldn't work at a place like that, and I think that's right, because they would fail. They wouldn't know how to work in a place that good. And I've been up there, and I've looked at those stores there among the, for me, an old retailer, they're just a, a work of art. They're like Picasso's or whatever. Those Wegman stores are awesome. And they're now down as far south as Washington, D.C. Number five, Edward Jones, 36,000 people. A lot of people, stock brokerage firm. Here we got, we're loaning governments, loaning money to Goldman Sachs and all these guys. This outfit, no government loans, great place to work, profitable, wonderful company. My brother used to work there. Just a class act all the way around. Number six is NetApp, 7,000 employees. Uh, high tech, I don't know that much about them. Camden Property Trust, 2,000 employees. REI. 10,000 employees, a co-op, you know, different kind of corporate organization. Uh, CHG Healthcare Services, 1,300 employees. Quicken Loans, 3,800. I'm skipping the ones with fewer employees because it's a little easier to pull off. Zappos, but that's really part of Amazon now, 3,000 employees. Mercedes-Benz USA, 1,700. Maybe they get free cars. I'm looking for the big employers. So that brings me all the way down here. If I'm looking for at least 10,000 employees, Chesapeake Energy, Oklahoma company, uh, 10,000 employees, ranked 18th. Um, USAA, wonderful company based in San Antonio. I've met those people too. They provide insurance largely to military officers. Class act, innovative, uh, interesting, treats their people right, ranked 20th in the nation. Uh, Qualcomm, 13,000 employees is 23rd. Um, uh, let's see, some of my favorites, uh, Salesforce, but they're only 3,800 employees. But then I get down here to Whole Foods Market, 60,000 employees. And I spent five years on the board of directors, know the founders, wonderful company. Actually, Goldman Sachs has 14,000 employees. It's pretty big. The thing is, as you look through this and you see companies you haven't heard of or aren't familiar with, others you might be very familiar with. Uh, not too many are household names. National Instruments here in Austin, Intel. There's a killer company. PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, let's see, anybody else big and famous? Uh, those are some. Uh, Men's Warehouse, another retail chain. The list goes on. I think they list like 100 companies or something. Um, it's just a fascinating list. Yes, 100 companies, including some restaurant chains and hotels. If you're going to go to work somewhere, you should look this up. But more important, if you're going to do business with a company, uh, if you're going to buy their stock, if you're going to partner with a company, it's good to know these kind of things. First of all, it's nice to walk in and say, oh, I saw you were in the world, you know, U.S. best places to work. Congratulations. Because they're probably all going to be very aware that their company's in that article. But it tells you something about the company. Because these aren't just made up. And these, these companies can't buy a position in that list. Fortune is too good a, a magazine to do that kind of nonsense. And, and, and the other thing is what companies aren't on there. Who are these companies' competitors? Where is Apple? Where's Trader Joe's? Uh, I forget if Microsoft is on there or not. Um, 
Why? I mean, every time you look at a company, you say, well, there's a lot of players in that industry. Turn to the World Almanac and you'll find a page that lists the biggest companies by industry. Well, what happened to the other guys? So, um, and, and they have comments about each one, so you can learn about it. I love lists. I learn a lot from them. I usually go down through every single company. When I get a new list like that, I'll be going through all hundred of those shortly. But th this uh, Fortune magazine is out on the newsstands now. It's dated February 6, 2012. As I speak, it's not even February yet uh, for another... Uh, five and a half hours. So um, that's my two bits for today. And consider making your company one of the best places to work. Because there are a lot of local lists too, where local magazines and newspapers have picked up on what Fortune did, and now they do it locally. So can you be in that list? Should you be in that list? Do you want to be in that list? The odds are companies on that list, well, they sure got a lot going for them. They'll better be able to attract talent. And if they do a lot of other things right, because you can't screw the customers, but if they put the customers first and they're a great place to work, those companies are going to be hard to beat. This is Gary Hoover. I'll talk to you later.